Okay, well let's get straight on and do an example. We know all the mathematics, we know the framework, uh, let's do some examples. So, you can see what I've done here. I've got two masses on springs connected to a ceiling, okay? And we're going to assume, as I've said in the, uh, the, the, the title below me, with gravity, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that there's a gravitational force of m2g. Remember how to work out m gravity. Um, and then another one here, uh, m3g. Those are going to be my external forces on the, uh, on the mass, mass 2 and mass 3. Okay, that's, that's basically F equals ma, Newton's second law, where, where the acceleration due to gravity is g. They're just, they're just known constants, okay? And in fact, they'll also be at the, at the, at the, uh, um, at the, at the, the ceiling, there'll be a reaction force, which I'm gonna call R, okay? Because the fact is that the ceiling has got to be exerting some force to stop the thing dropping down under gravity, okay? So there's got to be a balance of forces on this whole structure. But of course, the masses themselves are not just feeling the forces of gravity, they're also for feeling the internal spring forces uh, due to the springs. Okay, and when we're, when we're uh, calculating equilibrium, we need to take those into account. Okay, now look, I've shown you, uh, I've introduced uh, three nodes here. So we've got uh, three nodes, one, two, and three in the same way, and two edges, A and B. So our graph, we know what our graph is, uh, and we've got three node variables, therefore, but what I'm going to do, you see, is because I'm assuming that uh, the mass one is a, is a huge, hulking great ceiling, which it can't move, okay? So realistically, it can't move. So we're going to assume that phi 1, its displacement from equilibrium, just because of these, these dinky hang, hanging masses, isn't going to change. So phi 1 is going to be grounded, if you like. If you want to use the electric circuit analogy, it's going to be grounded. We don't know the displacement of mass 2, and we don't know the displacement of mass 3. That's phi, phi 2 and phi 3. Um, and we don't know the reaction force, uh, the external force, uh, that the ceiling is going to exert uh, in order to make sure that nothing uh, moves and everything is in equilibrium. Now, we could write down the incidence matrix if we wanted to, but from the last lecture, I already know that F, which is my vector of external forces, which, by the way, we know to be R, M2G and M3G. By the way, I've taken X, you see, to be, uh, you see here I've taken x to be uh, in the downward positive direction, okay? We know this is equal to the weighted Laplacian times our vector of displacements. That's what I just did in the last lecture. And let's just remind ourselves how to construct weighted Laplacians um, when we've got uh, spring constants here. And we'll assume that the spring constant um, here is Ca, and we'll assume the spring constant here is Cb. And so remember how to do this. What you do is you, you go to node 1 and you add, remember you've got 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2 and 3 for each node. And then what you do is there's a CA there, but it's connected to node 2, so you put minus CA there and it's not connected to node 3. Then the total, um, the total uh, spring constant, if you like, node 2 is CA plus CB, and then it's got a minus CA to node 1 and a minus CB to node 3, and then there's no connection to node 1 here, but then we have a CB there, and then it must be a minus CB there, because we know that all of the rows must add up to 0 to make sure we've got that x naught 1, 1, 1 right null vector. Okay, so there's our matrix. Uh, it's K, we know that. Uh, we know this, well, we don't quite know this. We, we know this and we know this. We don't know the R. Okay, we're going to solve that. So you can see, look, we've got this system of equations, R, M2, G, M3, G, is equal to this matrix K. And then let's look at our X vector. Well, the displacement of node 1 is 0 by assumption. And then we don't know the displacements of 
of, of, no, of the masses two and three. So we have to solve this uh, linear system, uh, as you can see here, for this, this and this. What does that remind you of? Doesn't that remind you very strongly of those electric circuits, right? Um, where some of the left hands, some of the unknowns were on the left hand side and some on the right hand side. OK, so one thing you could do here is to use sure complements and you can certainly do that. And I would suggest you do that as an exercise. It turns out, however, um, that uh, the solution can actually be written down very straightforwardly uh, by hand. You can just do this by hand and I'll write down the answers here so that you can just check. Phi 2 is the sum of the um, masses divided by Ca and then Phi, two, phi 3 is uh, M3G over Cb um, plus actually Phi 2 which we already know. Okay, And then you can actually find that R is equal to uh, minus m2 plus m3 times g. Okay, I've just written those down for you to check. Okay, that's minus m2 plus m3 times g. And basically you can see that r has to be a negative force, a reaction force, and you can see that because it's, it's kind of got to a counteract the downward gravitational pull of the two masses. But this is the solution to this system. You can see in a sense that the reaction force here is very similar to the effective conductance in the electric circuit problems, okay? Um, and uh, the structure of the mathematics is exactly the same. We use the same graph Laplacians weighted by the, strip, the spring constants in this case, and then sometimes we'll have to use uh, sure complements or just do this simple example by hand.